Hey up guys, it's Cly here, and welcome to Let's Play Assassin's Creed 3. Now, as you might be able to tell, I am coming off of a cold right now. I, I'm still a bit sniffly. You might hear a few sniffles here and there. I'll try and cut those out, because they are fucking disgusting. So, uh, you know, let's just get straight into the game. I have a lot to talk about. Hopefully, yes, I was going to say hopefully I have a safe space, and I do. This one here is 100% complete. Oh my god, that took the absolute piss. But if I can do that, then you can certainly do it. 100% completion on Assassin's Creed 3 is so tough. Did that take me 41 hours to do? Well, I guess it's not that tough then. Yeah, it's taking me like 200 hours to 100% complete Metal Gear Solid 5. So I suppose not that bad, if that is, of course, the time. Wow, incredible. Right, so, start a new game. Hopefully I can use Cly again, um, fingers crossed. Can I do that? I can. Used to be when people talked about the end of the world, we locked them up. Or laughed them off. Sometimes both. But we never took them seriously. Maybe we should have. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Better to start at the beginning, with the abduction of Desmond Miles, my son. This boy had no ambition, no direction, no plans for the future. What he did have was a heritage, one he chose to deny. It nearly cost him his life. He was captured and imprisoned. Those who took him believed he could help them find something. The apple. One of several artifacts we call pieces of Eden. Bits of ancient technology scattered across the globe. Some hidden, some found, all of them dangerous. Most are held by a single group, the same group that now had Desmond. You know them as Abstergo Industries. We know them as the Templars, as the enemy. We've been fighting them for thousands of years, even longer if you believe the stories of their origins. I do. After all, I've seen the truth. That's the beauty and the horror of the Animus. A device that allows us to enter and experience the lives of our ancestors. It holds the power to change everything, to show us history the way it really happened. Up until its creation, to the victor went the spoils, went the truth. We're trying to fix that, to free minds and bodies both. But there's only so much that we can do, and the Templars have the upper hand these days. But something larger than the Assassins and Templars is approaching, bigger than all of us. And if we can't find a way to stop it, these next few weeks will probably be our last. Everyone's last. In the end, it all comes down to him. To Desmond. Through the Animus, he discovered his heritage, explored the lives of his ancestors, and uncovered their secrets. When that was done, he trained. He used another ancestor to provide decades of experience in the span of a few days. It worked. We think. We hope. Soon, though, soon we'll know that ominous date fast approaches, December 21st, 2012. None of us knows what it'll bring, only that this is where they want us to be when it does. They've been guiding us in their own fractured, frustrating way. These voices from the first civilization, the ones who came before, a precursor race of immense power and uncertain motives. They're the ones who made the pieces of Eden. This is where they've led him, and through him, us. He stands at the entrance to this long lost place, armed with the knowledge of Altair and the abilities of Ezio. He holds in his hands the apple of Eden, and we stand at his side, ready to support him, however we can. His name is Desmond Miles, and he has brought us to the end. here.
Let's go. Now there is going to be quite a lot of talking, so I might not really get a chance to say a lot. However, I just want to point out there are quite a few, like, spoilers and mistakes in that opening thing. For one, I mean, I'm not going to harp on the voice of uh, John Delancey. I believe that's how you say his name. Uh, before we actually get to here, I'll try and just uh, make my point real quick. I believe his name is John Delancey, the, the guy who voices William Miles. Um, he, like, he, when he says, it's like, soon, though, soon we'll know, he's, like, trying to, like, get the, the point out there quickly. It's like he didn't want to read that. Um, I also believe that John Delancey was in Breaking Bad. I think he was, if I'm not mistaken. His voice sounded familiar. And also, um... Ezio, you see in the beginning, uh, I'll put the clip up now, in the beginning where he's wearing his hood from Brotherhood, um, oh, that sounds weird, he's wearing his outfit from Brotherhood, on the hood there's like a red, um, sort of, uh, what's it called now, uh, stitching, I suppose, on his hood, that doesn't exist in the game, uh, it's, it's a white stitching, not a red one, so, hmm, why did they do that, I don't know, but that would have been cooler, a red stitching would look badass. Another moment, down went Alice after it, never once considering how in the world she was to get out again. Oh yeah, and they also spoil, like, the place we're going to now in the intro. I mean, well, technically, it's not really spoiling it, because you don't really know we're going to get there yet, but still, it shows it before we get there, so, a little bit unfortunate. I think we're here. Okay, I've got a couple of seconds here. I just want to say, the intro to this game is really, really long. Desmond? Do you hear us? Uh, yeah. What happened? The temple triggered a bleeding effect. You collapsed and entered into a fugue state. 
So naturally, you dropped me into the Animus instead of, I don't know, making sure I was okay? You weren't in any danger. Besides, the Temple appeared to be communicating with you. And I didn't want to risk severing the connection. At least not until we knew what it wanted. Right. Of course. Son, I... No, it's fine. I get it. And I know what I'm looking for, by the way. It's a key. Just no idea where it is, though. I guess that's why she triggered the bleeding effect. She? Juno, Dad. She's... talking to me. Okay, Desmond. While you were, uh, visiting Constantinople, we picked up a software update for the Animus. I'd like to run a couple of quick tests, make sure there aren't any major issues. All right. What do you need me to do? We'll start simple. Walk to the marker over there. Okay, Desmond. Let's practice climbing on these objects. All right, well, I don't believe there's anything important here, so I'm just going to start talking. I think this little section here where we're getting used to the controls and stuff is implemented because they kind of changed a few things in Assassin's Creed 3 in comparison to uh, all the other Assassin's Creed, that is. Um, Assassin's Creed 3 is very similar to Assassin's Creed 4 and Assassin's Creed Rogue. Um, relatively similar to Unity, although Unity did change a lot of shit as well. Although I don't believe they actually gave us a tutorial in Unity. Um, no. Nor in any of the other games. Well, they obviously give the tutorial in a sense, but not like this, where they drop you in an Animus and say, Okay, here's a little bit of an area, go uh, test some shit. Uh, they don't do that, apart from they do in Assassin's Creed 1 and in Assassin's Creed 3, which is very strange. I don't know why they wouldn't have done that in Assassin's Creed um, Revelations, because that's actually when, you know, it sort of ties in with the first game, like, for real. But anyway, that's beside the point. So, we now have optional objectives, uh, like like we did in, um, I believe we had them in Brotherhood, and then Revelations. So, optional objectives, I'm probably not going to go for those, because uh, they're very annoying. Uh, I'll, I'll try, uh, but from what I can remember, uh, it's been a little while, shit, since I played this game. Uh, so, from what I remember, a lot of them are bullshit, and you do have to, like, retry a lot. Uh... Yeah, I might be able to do a lot of them. Some of the tricky ones I might be able to do in like one go. But for the most part, I'll probably try and avoid them because they're not really necessary. Uh, what the hell am I doing? Oh yes, of course. Gotta try and get on the fences here. And uh, this white bit here, a lot of people seem to complain about it. What the fuck was that? Desmond, like, what the hell? What actually happened there? I have no idea. Well, I think that's the first time I've ever failed on this training stage. Probably. Right, so let's try and do that again without Desmond flying off in a random direction. That'd be nice. Thank you very much, sir. Right, so let's try and finish this little tutorial as fast as we can because it is just a tutorial. Just get used to the whole concept of things, which basically means press R1 and do nothing else. That's the whole concept of Assassin's Creed nowadays. Press R1, do nothing else, which a little bit unfortunate. Organization levels look good now. We should be able to build the world. Time to find out what the temple wants from you. And of course, since we are in London, and since I am playing as a fellow Britishman, of course I have to have a cup of tea. Yes, fine. I'm just preoccupied, that's all. Don't forget your invitation. Master Birch will be meeting you inside. Thank you. Where shall I retrieve you once you're done? In front of the Opera House. And be quick about it. Don't expect to be here long. I'll bring her round at once. Invitation, please. Shall I take your coat, sir? Really? The fabrics she had the other week. Ladies and gentlemen, you are requested to kindly find your seats. Another garlic well underway. A medley of 
Good evening, sir. This way, please. My apologies. Evening, Haytham. Reginald? I can't tell you how happy I was to hear they'd mounted this revival. Gay's best work by far. Have you seen it before? Once. My father brought me here as a child. Though I remember little of it. I don't suppose tonight will afford me the luxury of a proper viewing either. No, I'm afraid it won't. On to business then. Do you see him? Be seated in one of the boxes above. The stairs are watched. You'll need to find another way up. Like me too, he acts in a double capacity. Both I already have. And fall. For it is but fitting that we should protect and encourage cheats, since we live by them. Sir, Black Maul, that sick word of trial, comes on in the afternoon. Oh, and she hopes you will order matters yeah. so as to bring... A thousand pardons. Oh, my apologies. So sorry. You may satisfy that I'll soften the evidence. Come, okay, sir. All right, then. So, we are playing as... Haytham Kenway. Haytham Kenway is a fucking legend. However, I have to admit, I'm a little bit disappointed. I'm not going to spoil it right now, of course, because why would I ever do that? But when it comes to it, which it shouldn't be too far away, um, probably within, oh my uh probably within the next 40 minutes or so, uh, I, I believe, if I'm counting correctly, which I, I'm probably not, but you know, 40 or so minutes, We'll see what I'm talking about here, and I'll be able to explain it within great detail. So, I've played almost all the Assassin's Creed games, uh, bar Freedom Cry, although would you really call that a game? It's more of a, you know, expansion, really. Um, I've just recently finished Assassin's Creed Rogue, which uh, I have to reserve my judgement for that because I've only just finished it, so realistically, I can't really have an opinion on it if I've just played, like, what? 12 hours of it or so. It's not a very long game. Um, Assassin's Creed 3, however, is a very long game. Here we have some lock picking, which is oh, very simple, of course, which um, I felt like I fucked up there, but I didn't, so that's always cool. Right, so Haytham Kenway, what a fucking ledge. Oh, actually, before I go on about Haytham Kenway real quick, I'm looking around for it right now. Um, can't find it, but I actually do own Assassin's Creed Syndicate. I've not actually played it yet. It's still in the the little what is it? Is it cellophane? I don't exactly know. Oh shit! Oh, we're good. All right, so it's still in the wrapping, let's say. So I haven't actually opened it yet. I'll probably like put a little clip of me flailing it about or something. Yeah, there it is. Right, so and well, I hope I remember anyway. So I have yet to play that game. I would assume it has nothing to do with the main continuity because well. Does Assassin's Creed even have a main story anymore? Because according to Rogue and Assassin's Creed 4 and Assassin's Creed Unity, it doesn't. The main story, the, you know, the present day story is virtually non-existent nowadays. Well, it, I say that. In Rogue, there kind of was a little bit of a, a story going on, a little bit, and then it just sort of ended. So, you know, more like a cock tease, really. Ah, unfortunate. You should have come to me. We would have found another way. Yes. But then you would have known. For what it's worth. I'm sorry. As am I.
So as you can see, Haytham is a very classy man, and he is, he's very polite, you know, he didn't just kill that guy, you know, rudely, he didn't just walk up and like slice his throat out, he just, you know, had a conversation with him, you know, albeit a, a very unfortunate conversation, and then just, you know, stabbed him, killed him pretty much instantly, like straight through the heart, you know, shot through the heart and you're to blame, darling, you give love a bad name. Although Haytham does not, because he is one sexy mofo. He also has a slight resemblance to Ezio, a younger Ezio, when Ezio had the red ribbon tied around his hair to give him a ponytail, if you remember. Well, if you don't remember, I've just told you. So there you go. Now you know. And how was the opera? Rather dull, truth be told. Shall we be off then? Aye. To Fleet and Bride. By your command. This book is to be believed, it will open the doors of a storehouse built by those who came before. Ah, yes. Those who ruled, reigned, and vanished from the world. Do we know what it is that will be held within? It could contain certain knowledge. Perhaps a weapon, or something as yet unknown, unfathomable in its construction and purpose. It could be any of these things, or none of them. They are still an enigma, these precursors. But of one thing I am certain, whatever waits behind those doors shall prove a great boon to us all. Or our enemies, should they find it first. They won't. You've seen to that. I assume you know where this storehouse is? Ah, Mr. Harrison. Gentlemen. How fair your calculations? I believe the site lies somewhere within this region. That's a lot of ground to cover. My apologies. Were that I could be more accurate. That's all right. It suffices for a start. And that is why we've called you here, Master Kenway. We'd like for you to travel to America, locate the storehouse, and take possession of its contents. I'm yours to command. Although a job of this magnitude will require more than just myself. Of course. Upon this paper are the names of five men sympathetic to our cause. Each is also uniquely suited to aid you in your endeavor. With them at your side, we'll want for nothing. Well, then I'd best be on my way. I knew our faith in you was not misplaced. We booked you passage to Boston. Your ship leaves at dawn. Go forth, Haytham, and bring honor to us all. So, there are quite a few things I want to say about Haytham Kenway. Um, but I don't really want to spoil things too soon, uh, because it kind of ties in with Assassin's Creed 4. You don't really learn this stuff until later down the line. So, I hope I don't, like, say too many things that sort of, like, you know, ruin it. I know the games have been out for a long time now, so I suppose I can't really spoil too much. If you wanted to play the games, you'd have played them by now. Well, most of you, anyway. So, I'll try and keep things to a minimum. But I really want to discuss Haytham's character, because he is a very interesting person, and uh, someone I wish that stuck around for a little bit longer than he does. That's not really a spoiler, I hope. Also, um, Hall in the Bowline, or Bowlin, is a really good song.
share my tunicode.